So you've got this data set and it's in this one format, but you need it in this other format. And how do you go about doing that? You've got to go through every row and then change it and reformat it and rejig it. I've got a quicker way of doing that. Hi, I'm Florian. This is the Productivity Exchange. And in today's problem, we're going to convert data from one format to another. It involves regular expressions. I'll get to what those are in a moment and a text editor. Now let's look at our data. Here is some employee data for a fictional company I created that includes pay grade, name, email, phone number, age, number of years at the company, and a last financial year. You can find a link to this data set in the description below. What I want to do is I want to reformat this so that each row is split out across multiple rows in this format here. So that I get name, and then the name, email, and then the email, and so on for all of these. And what we're going to do is we're going to leave Excel, and I'll show you how to do this in Sublime Text. You could also use Notepad++, which is a program that I've been using for years. Unfortunately, it's only available for Windows, unlike Sublime Text, which is available across more platforms. So first up, let's see what data looks like when we copy it from Excel into a text editor. I'm going to just take the first three rows, copy those, and paste those into Sublime Text. Notice how we've got a little blurry bit of text up here. What Sublime Text does is it will show you the pre a preview of the entire document. If I copy this, you'll be able to see. And then you can navigate it uh, more visually. It's kind of like the scroll bar, except it shows you a preview of roughly what it looks like. However, I'm only interested in the first three rows. So I'm going to take the first three rows of data and the headers and paste those across. You'll notice that each row in Excel corresponds to a row in Sublime Text. You'll also notice that each column's data is separated by a larger space. That's actually the tab character, and you can get that by hitting the tab key on your keyboard. That will tell Excel, when we paste this back into Excel, that it expects that to be split to the next column. So to test this out, let's make our own little bit of data. And what I'll do is I'll come back to Sublime Text and type column A, row one, uh, then tab, column B, row one. And then I will do the same thing here, column A, row two, tab, column B, row two. Now notice that our tab character here to split the columns looks about the same size as this space just here. This can happen. It's because the tab character aligns to particular parts of the document moving across the page. So if I, for example, remove some of this, you can see that the tab character is still there. There's just one tab character there, but uh, it keeps that text aligned. This sort of alignment doesn't necessarily mean that something is going to be in one column or the next, but it is generally a good visual indicator. Now, there is definitely a tab character there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and move it into our blank sheet over here. And what we can see is we've got column A, row one, exactly where we want it to be, column B, row one, exactly where we want that to be, and the same for our row two, column A and B. So let's move on to regular expressions. What are they? They're a sequence of characters that specify a search pattern that's usually used to find and replace text in strings. Now by string, what they mean is some sequence of characters that generally form some sort of text. That can be something like the string that I'm showing on the screen right now. All right, so what do regular expressions look like? Well, something like this on the screen now. I know it looks complicated, but stay with me and let me break it down. Once it clicks, it's actually not much more complicated than Lego. The first thing you need to know is that there are two types of characters, regular characters and meta characters. Regular characters basically take care of themselves. You don't need to worry about those. They're just your plain standard text and numbers. Meta characters, however, have special meanings. For example, the full stop will match to any character, the plus will mean one or more, asterisk means zero or more, and the backslash will escape whatever the function of the next one was going to be and do something different instead. So one example of the backslash operator would be the letter N. N on its own is just the letter N, but backslash will mean new line. So it's escaping being normal text and uh, doing the operation of breaking to a new line. 
Another example of this is plus on its own means one or more, whereas backslash plus will mean just the text character plus. Probably doesn't make much sense right now, but uh, bear with me. So how do you use regular expressions in a text editor? You can always find the regular expressions options in the search function, which you can pull up with control F. It may be command F in Mac. But what you'll need to do is you'll need to also select a special option, which uh, will turn on regular expressions. They will also work in find and replace, which you can get to with control A. And just to show you the same thing in Notepad++, if I hit control F to bring up the find functionality, I need to tick regular expressions here, or in replace, and you'll also need to select it there. So to rearrange the data, let's copy it across from Excel. I will grab everything except for the headers because I don't want those, and I will paste them into my document here. Now it's taken me to the bottom. I personally like being at the top of the document when I'm doing these things, uh, but that's just personal preference. Now I've got regular expressions selected here, and I can just start typing here. So the first thing I want to do is capture the first column's worth of data. Now we're building a pattern, so it will look like we're capturing more than what we're intending, but uh, bear with me and we'll slowly whittle it down. So the first thing that we'll want is something with letter characters. So if I do slash W, you can see Sublime Text will actually show me what that matches to here as well. You can see each letter matches separately. So if we go to find to find the next one, you can see it's skipping ahead through all of those. Now, slash w will match just one letter, but we've got multiple, which is where the plus comes in really nice and useful. We can just go plus, and it will capture anything that is a number of letters long, so one or more. And you can see that it captures each word separately. It doesn't currently capture spaces, but it will just capture the words. The next character that we have is a tab. So what I need is slash t which matches a tab. After this, what I've got is a name. Now, you might be tempted to go slash w plus to capture the first name, and then a space, and then slash w plus to capture the second name. But this wouldn't work if we had things like double barrel names. So let's uh, give it some double barrel name, brown. So you can see that it's not capturing that because of the hyphen in there. Or say this person's name was O'Kelly up here with an apostrophe, it also won't capture that. The other thing to bear in mind is that sometimes people will have their middle name. So Jess Kelly might actually be Jess Laura Kelly, and you can see it will just capture Jess Laura. So in order to get around that, we can do is we can actually tell the regular expressions what characters we want it to match. So we can create a little group and we'll do that within some square brackets. And then I just will say I want little a to z and then I want a big A to z. So this will match any alphabet character. And then we also want to capture spaces between the names. And we also want to capture any apostrophes or hyphens. Now, at the moment, we're only capturing the first letter because this matches to just one letter at the moment. But if we put the our trusty plus in front of it, you can see that we get the whole name. And again, if I make this uh, person's name Russo Brown, like so, you can see that it'll capture the whole name. And if I make this person's name O'Kelly, it will capture that. And if I add a middle name, it will also capture that. Next, we want to move to the email column. So we will have another slash T, and that takes us across to that. Now in the email column, we have dots and we have ats. We might also have hyphens for hyphenated names, and we might also have apostrophes. So what I will do is I will copy what we have previously, but instead of the space, I don't want any spaces, but I will want an at to be included, and I will want a, a dot to also be included. There we go. So that should capture the entire email address. 
Again, we'll need a slash T. Now, here we have a phone number which includes plus and spaces and numbers. So again, I will make a little custom group. I will say 029. I also want to have the plus character and I want to have a space character. And then I will close our little group and square brackets and I will add a plus. So we can see that that now matches to the whole string up to the phone number. Um, next, we will want to put in slash t to move to the next column. And now we've come across age. Now, what I can do is I could make another group and just say 0 to 9. Or what I can do as well is say slash d, which means digit. If I go slash d plus, it will mean some number of digits. Now, it would be very unusual to have children or centenarians working at this company. So we can also just define that we want exactly two characters like this. Or if there were two or three, if we did have some centenarians working for us, uh, we could include that like this. So if I make this person 660 years old, that's still captured. Whereas if I move that, it is not captured. What I'll do though, is I'll just use slash D plus it's lazy, but it will capture exactly what we need to. Now I'll use slash t to move to the next column. And we just have a single digit for the number of years of service because this company was created less than 10 years ago. And finally, we want the salary, which we will need to move across to using slash t. And I will again make a custom group, which will be 0 to 9, and the dollar sign and a comma. I also want a plus on the end of that so that I capture the whole amount. Now, if I move through here, I'll notice that I'm not quite capturing the end here. That's because I haven't included a dot in my little group. So this person got a 50 cent amount on the end. So I will just put a point in there. And now we are capturing the whole amount. So if I do find next, it will capture the whole thing. So this is all well and good. But how do we make this work for us? Well, let's open the replace menu with control H. And uh, whoops, it's removed our little regular expression. Let's just paste it back in there. And uh, what we can do is we can actually capture little groups. So if I do slash W plus and I put that in little brackets like this, then I can just use slash one to recall what's in the first group of brackets. If I capture the second bit inside parentheses, what I can do is I'll just put a space and then slash two. So if I did a replace, so what I would expect would be the first column starter with a space and then the second column starter. So if I do a replace on that, that's exactly what I'm finding. That's a space. You can tell by that dot um, that it's not a line like this for the tab. And uh, it's removed all of the other data, but I'm going to undo the, there we go. So the format that we wanted for our data looks like this. Let me just enlarge that so that we can capture that really nicely on the screen. And I'll just scroll to the top. I will also zoom out a little bit on Sublime Text. Now I've just made this a little bit shorter, but uh, this is still in the same row. You can see that the rows texts are numbered. So it just wrapped it here on the screen, but it's actually still in its own row. What I'll need to do is I'll need to capture all of the column starter. So I'll just skip through that and uh, put our little parentheses around each column's uh, data. And by the magic of editing, so we've now captured all seven pieces of data. Now the first thing that we want to replace this with is name. So I'll just put a pipe name like this, and then I'll use slash two to denote this group there. Now what I want to do is I want to move to a new line and I'll use slash n. Slash n is a new line command. However, if you're using notepad plus plus, it's worth remembering that you need to use slash r slash n. They're just weird quirks because it uses a slightly different regular expression engine than Sublime Text does. Now the next thing that we want is email. And for that, I will use slash three because that is the third column in our data set, followed by slash n for a new line, and then phone, slash four. And now we have the role, and I want role to be slash one, because that's the first group that we captured. 
and I'm also going to put spaces between the name, uh, email, and uh, phone number and their respective little category things here. Slash n, a space, slash five, slash n, years of service, and then slash six, and then a new line. And finally, wages, slash salary, FY20, and slash seven. Now I've introduced some extra spaces in here and removed one here just to show you what that would look like. So if I do replace all now, I can see that I've got name, email, phone, role, age, years of service, and then wages. I can also see that there's no space here. There's a space here and we are missing two blank lines. So what I'll do is I'll just use control Z to undo that. Go back to control H to pull up what we've just had. And uh, I'll introduce the space here remove the space there and just enter two new lines. There we are. So if I do replace all now, it will look something like what we have over here on the side. And if I copy all of that, so control A, control C, just paste it in here so that we can compare them side by side. And boom, that is exactly what we were after. Now, sometimes what you'll notice is that uh, your data doesn't actually look quite like what you wanted, or some of the bits of data get missed. So, for example, if I do something over here, uh, let's put an at character between the names. So if I now run the uh, regular expression, say you've had somebody put in data terribly, if I do a replace all, what you'll see is you'll just see one long row like this that gets skipped. In those instances, what you'll need to think to yourself is, is it quicker to fix my pattern in my regular expression, or is it quicker to just quickly seek out each of these instances and quickly do this data manually? Now I'll leave it there for today. We've reformatted the data in the way that we want, and uh, this is one of those things that you're going to have to practice yourself. So the link to this data set here is in the description below, and uh, I've left the split data blank so that uh, you can fill your data in there and you can compare it to what it looks like in the video. I've also included some links to these cheat sheets, which I've personally found quite useful in the past. Uh, they show you what the characters are uh, and an example. They explain what they do and then they tell you what the sample matches. So if you've got file underscore 25, this particular regular expression would find that exactly. There are so many things in regular expressions that you can add on top of what I've just showed you. Uh, characters that will find or match to any character, um, as well as uh, line separators, which we've already used with the slash n or the slash r for the carriage return, um, or characters uh, like slash w, which are words, which we used before, but then also slash capital W, which means not a word character, so it will match any character that is not a letter or a number. Um, and then we've also got slash s, which will match to space characters like space and tabs and new lines, and just a whole host more. So over to you to practice this. I think this is a skill well worth having. I think I've personally saved myself many, many hours with this in the past. And uh, while it does look scary to begin with, it does become easier with practice. If you found this useful, please share it with somebody that you think will also find it useful. Uh, leave a like and uh, subscribe to see more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.